So I'm from Rawson, which is the 20th smallest library in the <laughs> province. <laughs> so when she's talking about all these massive programs, I'm going, yeah, not happening. Um, of course, with any library, one of the biggest problems with um, getting digital literacy off the ground is money. And in 27, December 10, 2017, the Library Federation shared out money with its members. We got $300. Um, bigger libraries got more, smaller libraries got less. Um, and then the fun began because, first of all, I looked at our community, which is 3,700 people, and went, what do they need? And we identified that it's the younger children, so five to nine, that don't have the opportunities. The older kids get opportunities elsewhere, um, but not the younger kids. Then I put, sent up the library signal and said, hey guys, what are you guys using? And got a lot of interesting responses back. Um, which led to some interesting discussions. I remember asking Sarah Felcar if Spiro would get stuck under our book stacks. He did not. He got stuck behind the copy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wendy from Smithers was a font of knowledge. They are actually in a different situation than us, but they have no program space. So what they are doing with their digital stuff is they have kits that they lend out. Um, Sometimes you should also ask her her funny drone story. Um, <laughs> But, so in the end, we bought a Dash, and we bought a Sphero, and if you haven't met Dash, he's lovely because he's very personable. He's, people love him because as soon as you turn him on, he sort of does stuff. Um, Sphero, all the kids love because he goes fast. <laughs> then, uh, of course, now we are looking at staff capacity, um, time, knowledge is not a lot on the ground. We were lucky enough to, again, get a Schoolworks school grant, which is funded by Colony Basin Trust and administered by the College of the Rockies to hire a tech student. And we hired the lovely Renaissance teenager, Emery, who I can't say enough about. This boy speaks three languages, plays four instruments, has traveled the world with his family, and is infinitely Patient. He ran programs this year after we reopened for our renovation, which I forgot to mention. Um, he ran programs this year that were oversubscribed. He was so calm with 10 kids who just wanted to touch Dash continually for an hour now. <laughs> they just wanted to pick him up and hug him. They wanted to, it, it was uh, quite amazing. And we actually had a little boy in tears because he couldn't attend the session once. Standing in the library crying because he wasn't going to be able to come on Saturday. Um, we are again lucky that Canada Summer Jobs has come forward and given us money. We will have continue Emory's position. However, not with Emory because apparently they're going to Turkey or something this summer. <laughs> so we've hired the um, lovely Sammy who is equally capable and will probably you know, work out just fine, but we're still waiting on that. I think one of the things that I found when I talked to small libraries about this was the whole, well, how big is this robot? Where am I going to keep it? Because when you're in a small space, it's like where do you store stuff? So we've kind of got a designated cupboard in our new office, and once it's full, it's full. We will either be offloading stuff, or we won't be able to get new stuff. And the thing with the program room, we are a small library that is very, very lucky to have a multi-purpose room and a separate quiet study room with our piano. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have space to do this. I think in small libraries it's always doable. You can always find a grant to buy a hundred dollar robot. But sometimes the space and the staff capacity are the issue. I'll let you know how robots go. <laughs> I'm a systems librarian at uh, North Vancouver City Library. So I think last year I was saying we are introducing a recording lab shortly, and now I can report a year into having our recording studio. So um, our recording station opened in July 2018. Um, basically, it is a 10 by 14 room sound baffle for audio and video production. Um, this year, um, so far, we've already had about 266 bookings. We're finding we're about 70 percent full on average each month, which is awesome. Um, so, in terms of where this came from, um, our creation station this is one of the creation stations we've been introducing. The first one was the digitization station, and we were planning on doing separate um, audio and video one, but we ended up just kind of combining it all into one because they're all part and parcel there. 
Um, we borrowed shamelessly off of VPL for this, so thank you, VPL. <laughs> um, we use the same uh, vendor to source the booth. Basically, it's a modular thing that just comes in crates and they put it together with some help from someone we provide. Um, and we drywall the exterior as well to be able to do some branding and some vinyl wrap and that kind of thing. Um, one thing I'll say about actually the install process is make sure you know your fire codes and that kind of thing really well because we ran into a couple of issues with that, including like three holes drilled into the ceiling of my soundproof booth, which woke me up in a panic for many, many nights in a row. Um, and also uh, wheelchair compliance, because this came from the US, the uh, criteria for that is quite different than Canada, so that caused several months of having to re totally redesign the ramp going up to it and the turnaround and rails and everything, so watch for that as well. Um, so I'm recording with itself inside of it, so we've got um, basic and advanced um, audio recording software, um, an audio input device, like a basic mixer, headphones and speakers, MIDI controller, as well as the video production software and prop tables and stools, uh, green screen, as well as a black and white pop-up screen as well for people. Um, for the rest of the equipment we store um, at our information desk on the third floor, so people can borrow uh, video cameras. We went for kind of a basic handy cam as well as a DSLR camera, so people have options. Um, so there's the camera kits, there's video microphone for on the camera, tripods, video lights. For audio, we have a couple of different microphone kits, one more for sitting on the tabletop for a podcaster types, so and one more kind of odd. Um, instrument vocal kind of microphone as well. Um, all the equipment is basically on reserve for whoever is using the booth. Um, and it's just checked out from the desk via paper form and we have a big big trolley that they drag it back to the um, recording booth with. Um, you can also strip this. So along with the recording station we also did introduce a separate editing station PC outside the booth for that post-production work that takes way more time than the actual um, recording part of it. Um, okay, what else do I want to say? Uh, people book it online, so they, they, we basically have a system in place where they can go onto our website and check when the station is actually available and when it isn't. They fill out a little booking form online and that goes to our staff, who will uh, email the back for confirmation. It's not automated, which is a downside in some ways, but also allows us to go double check. Do they have a library card? Do they owe us hundreds of dollars worth of fines? In which case, no. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, a big part of launching this once we'd already picked all of the equipment and decided what we were going to offer was the staff training part of it, so that was huge, which that took us several months to get through, because we really wanted to be able to get hands-on training for everyone who was going to be interacting with this booth on a daily basis. So everyone who worked on the third floor got four separate training sessions, or six hours in total each, and we were usually only able to do them in pairs. So we really took a couple of months, um, at least, with I think it was three or four months by the time we were done to get everyone through. We did it, first one was an intro to the station, like how to book it, checking in, checking out, that kind of thing. And we did do hands-on training with both the audio equipment and the video equipment to make sure everyone was comfortable at least knowing what we had, knowing how to set it up and how to take it down, because we assumed that was the stuff they were going to get asked on a day-to-day -day basis, and that hasn't been kind of the case. We did set up kind of a um, backup system, so people who were on the desk could call, like, Someone else from the digital services team if they needed help, but we didn't really end up using that all that much. By the end of spending that much time doing the staff training, they were pretty comfortable with just the basic setup, take down kind of things, and we really only get called in when something goes really wrong. So that's been pretty successful, I think. Um, okay. uh, in terms of the usage, it has been predominantly audio. That's been the real focus. Uh, we get the podcasters coming in several times a week sometimes if we have room and coming in every single week to do it. Uh, the voiceovers and music are really popular too. For video, we see folks doing audition tapes, YouTube videos and blogs, a lot of product and business videos, um, and a lot of instructional videos as well. So um, in terms of how we're evaluating it, whenever we get a first time user, which they indicate that on the booking form, mm -hmm. I do keep track of all of our first time users and I send out a survey about a month or two after the first time they use it to get some feedback on that. That's still kind of coming out right now, um, but from what I've seen so far, we're up, one of the questions that we've had about 79% of them say they were reported they were inspired to create something new by seeing the station and museum for which is really exciting to us. Um, and 100% said they'd recommend it to family and friends, so that was really exciting. Uh, future plans, we're looking more to make a portal on our website to sort of feature people's projects that they've made in the booth. Um, we're moving towards doing staff book reviews, um, 
by video and podcast as well. And we are now kind of starting to think about the next stage of our creation station. So we'll be seeing some graphics and presentations and video publishing. So, yeah. That's the very talking fast version, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions about that?